It's Kate from Venison for Dinner. If you have a bunch of milk and you're needing to use it, like milk fresh from your cow, we're not talking about a bunch of store milk, that needs kind of different. But if you have a milk cow and you find the milk is overflowing, come check out what I did with 10 gallons of milk today. I always start by washing a huge pot and getting going with milk. And then over here, Marius is homeschooling some kids and I'm getting it straining, not straining, skimming. So any milk that's over 12 to 24 hours old will have a significant amount of cream on top. And any of that cream that is pretty thick, it won't actually incorporate into the cheese. You'll lose it in the whey. So I skim that all off for butter or sour cream or ice cream or whatever creamy delights you want in your house. Some cream always sticks to the jars and I find the easiest way to get the most out of them is to put them upside down on top of our milk jugs and just let it drip out. So this is kind of a passive way of doing it. And then I always wash the milk jars right away afterwards with super hot water. Um, nothing is dried on, it's super easy to wash. If you let them sit even half an hour, you gotta scrub them with soap. But if you can just do it right away with super hot water, they get really nice and clean. So I ended up with butter churn jar of cream. That's about the max that I can put in this one gallon jar. This one, this is probably a bit too much for a round, but I have another jar too from the fridge. So I'll probably, when I do this round, top it up and churn. So I have three rounds of butter to do. Lots of milk jar to to wash. And I'm getting the milk warming up here. This is really close to eight gallons of milk. I didn't heat up the milk right away. I waited about half an hour, which I wouldn't normally do but it's 10 after 10 right now and I gotta run to the kids to piano lessons at 10.30. So my goal is that the milk is warm enough that I add the culture and rennet and it sits while I run them to piano and when I get back, I can proceed with cheese making because I only have to bring them to piano and then they are bringing them home. So the older three are all going for piano lessons and whoever is not getting lessons at that point is helping them with chores because they don't charge us for piano lessons. We trade stuff, we give them meat and mead and baking and meals and such, but um, this time they have, they have chores for the kids. They have to bring in firewood and they need to get shavings from the neighbor's shavings bay. I just wanted to grab my clabber culture out and apparently I used part of it and forgot to refresh it. So this is not enough clabber culture. I need to use a freeze dried culture. Not the end of the world, but not what I was aiming for. I love to stir curds with my hands. I love to feel how they are and you know, I just love it. So these curds are definitely not ready. These are just in the middle, but now they're getting closer. They're getting smaller. If I find a clump of them, I just bust it up with my hands, but I'll show you here in just a second how I tell if curds are ready to be pressed. Um, so I put the butter, the jars, I'm showing you the jars of cream, but also tortillas. I'm showing you a lot of things at once. I put the jars of cream by the stove so that they warm up a bit. Ideal temperature is like 10 Celsius, 40 Fahrenheit for churning in a ch butter churn. So I hold these curds together, mimicking a press. And if they hold together nicely, then I know they're done and they are. So then my next step, I didn't get getting the curds out of there, but I use my big cheese curd, cheese cloth. Guys, my words today. I use my big cheese cloth and I scoop the curds out of the pot because they sink to the bottom. So you can kind of like tuck it around like a fitted mattress is what it was described to me. And there is a lot of curds for this press today. This press fits over eight pounds of cheese. So... It was full and I, it took a bit of effort to get it all in there nicely, but now it is and I can 
finish up its pressing. So the cheese is in the press now. I pulled one quart of the cream and added in some other sour cream because I realized we were low on sour cream. Shook them together and then this is just gonna sit and culture at room temperature for about 24 hours. All this whey needs to go into buckets for the chickens and the first batch of butter is on the go. So it'll be about three batches of butter, I'm pretty sure. Um, the churn can um, move as it vibrates, so I always put it on something so that it doesn't dance its way off of the counter. So I have the cheese. Yes, Mac, that would work. In the press. No idea. Looks like it needs to be washed a bit better. Freya, that's enough. Okay. The cheese doesn't need to be flipped just yet. Um, I do need to add more weight in a minute. I'm going to show you how I know I need to add more weight. It's been about 15 minutes. Um, and I'm going to pick up straw for the cows here in about half an hour. So it's going to be a good time. I'm going to pick it up, come back, and then flip the cheese. It needs about an hour. Okay, so Mac, just wait a second. Um, the holes, they, whey was coming out of them, and now whey has stopped. So this is my cue to add more weight and then i think i'm actually going to add these books too okay so now you can see that oh maybe you can't see it so i don't know how well you can see that whey is now gently dripping out you don't want whey to be shooting out of there that means you got too much pressure but just gently dripping out tells me that it's the right pressure and i will leave it like this now for the next 40 minutes until i flip Okay, so it's been like 40 minutes now, and I just got home with the straw. Marius is gonna pick up the straw, but the people we get straw from, if he goes there, he ends up talking for hours. Um, he's like, I just can't get away. I like talking with them, but also I have other things to do. So the last couple times he has sent me to get hay because I just go and come back. I talk for like two minutes. Hmm, rooster. Why are you on the loose? This is a Chanticleer rooster. It is a Canadian chicken breed. Oh, there's a few loose. We're gonna have to get on that. Anyhow, he said if I ran and picked it up, he would take care of unloading it. Hi, Pepper. We just have all sorts of barnyard friends today. But now we gotta go flip the cheese. I did leave the butter churn going because he said he would be in the house because Amos was napping, so there you go. All the buttermilk and whey goes into feed buckets to feed the chickens or pigs if we have them. Um, we get pigs again in a few weeks. I'm so excited to show you guys them. 
Anyhow, we just have way too much dairy to try and save these things for household use. These are animal feed and animal feed is great use for it. So you don't have to do this in a jar like this, but if my butter's a really nice texture, I find this an easy way to get out a bunch of the buttermilk while I'm still, you know, in the initial stages. <laughs> I always weigh out four ounce blobs. Occasionally I do one pound, but primarily I do four ounce. I really like this size. I like how it fits in our butter dish and for baking, it's so easy. Uh, one thing you may not know is in Canada, our, pow our butter comes in one pound blocks. It doesn't come in four ounce sticks like in the States. So the standard, if you buy butter in Canada, you would have to search hard to find those sort of sticks. It's always a one pound block, but Lots of things going on in the kitchen today. Another round of butter and Mac is making a soup and Freya, I think is doing dishes, but it looks like she's more dancing with that tea towel than actually making dishes. And look, there's the puppy. There's a lot going on here. So the third batch of butter is doing this thing here. We have about two and a half pounds of butter here already. And then this is gonna give us another pound or so. So total, I bet we're gonna get four pounds of butter from all, from about six quarts of cream. So I think I started with 10 gallons of milk, maybe not quite. I got the six quarts of cream into butter, close to four pounds of butter. I could have had six quarts of buttermilk, but I'm feeding it to the chickens. You can save it for baking, use it in place of milk in baking or water instead, you know, all that sort of thing. I have the quart of sour cream. I have all this whey that's going to the chooks, chickens. Um, we put it in buckets and we save it. It doesn't go bad, it just ferments. And we feed it out to them a few gallons at a time. In the press, I have probably a seven pound wheel of cheese. So started with 10 gallons of milk, four pounds of butter, one quart of sour cream, seven pounds of cheese. This is about average yields for me. Mama. There's this very difficult decision. That... Yes, Roman, what's up? You would like a cookie, please? Yep. We're not buying pocket bikes, sorry. Oh boy, train of thought derailing quickly. Mac is shopping for, I don't know, dirt bikes and skidoos and such. Yeah, you're not old enough, sweet pie. We have soft butter. Do we make cookies or not? This is the question every time you're faced with soft butter, fresh butter, perfect temperature for making cookies. Although we did just make cookies a couple days ago, we still have speculas. Yeah. And then make more cookies? What sort of cookies? It says we should have peanut butter cookies. We've been making a lot of molasses cookies. Crackle top molasses, ginger snaps. That's the one, ginger snap cookies recently. Decisions. We just looked outside to Mac driving the snowmobile. Our snowmobile has been not working for months now. I don't know what's going on there. I didn't even know what Mac was doing. But then Hamish comes running it downstairs. I hear a snowmobile. And then we look and there's Mac driving our snowmobile. Well, then have some anticipation here, waiting. What is going on there? Okay, so I did decide to make cookies. I am using the Mennonite Community Cookbook. And I'm making pecan squares. They call for shortening, but of course I'm gonna use butter. Rowan's sad because she wants to go outside. You gotta get your snow clothes and I'll put them on for you. Go get your snowsuit. Okay. Shortening brown sugar, egg, flour. Spread them in a pan. Top with an egg, brown sugar, pecans. Bake them. Let's see how this goes. 
So of course I start by mixing it, but then I have a brief intermission because Mary's got home with the mail and we have these in the mail. I bought these for him as a present because he loves making mead and two of these are distilled mead, super neat. And you don't need to hear this, this is loud. So you're just gonna hear me talk for a minute. Um, this is not a one-handed job. This is very much a two-handed job. I need some. For an 11 by 16 pan. Do we have an 11 by 16 pan? Sprinkle them around, spread them all around, Rowan. Like Try and put nuts where there isn't any. That's not how I should do it. Here, you can just pick them out and put them on. So I maybe was busy washing potatoes and trimming a string of pearls to propagate while they were doing this and I think we ended up with more nuts than the recipe calls for but it looks delicious what do you have oh yeah you put that away thank you good job here is in the fridge now to chill I do this so that when I bag it up it doesn't all just mush together some whey buckets from Hamish to put the whey in the buckets to go to the chicken. Some of it just stays in the basement. I have fed my clabber culture, so now it will be ready next time I'm gonna make cheese. It's good for kind of about five days. Well, right now it's almost a stretch. I'm almost not quite making cheese that often because I just don't have quite enough milk at a time. Unless I make smaller wheels, which I don't like doing. Marius is out there plowing some snow. Freya's working on something nefarious. Oh, and we have buckets. The cheese will now sit in the press until tomorrow morning and then I will brine it. Oh, lucky me, Mac and Hamish are taking the younger ones out. Ugh, snowmobiling. Hamish said, so you can have some brain space to think. They had a conversation the other day about how often I, how I don't often get quiet time and space to think. So now it's something that's been on their radar and maybe once a week they're like, mom, would you like to have quiet time in your room? And I'm like, yes, yes, I would. So they're taking them out there and I'm going to fix my slipper. The puppy put a hole in it and then I put a patch on it and then the puppy ate the patch. So we're going to try again here. And, uh. Yes, yeah, so we're gonna do that. And I have a devotional I'm working on that I haven't done yesterday, so I'm probably gonna do that. So I'm gonna sign off here because this is my quiet brain space time and I must use that to its best potential. So have a lovely day, friends. Baked them for about 25 minutes. They said 20 to 25 minutes. Maybe I even did longer. I think they're still way too gooey. The oven's still on baking potatoes, so we're gonna throw it in for another five minutes. Maybe I'll regret that, but at this point, I don't feel like the center could even be um, cut. And it's been sitting for 15, 20 minutes. I think the reason why it took so long is I had potatoes in the oven too, and I should have moved around what trays they were on. Um, but the bottom looks great, and now they're done, and they are delicious.
Did you hear what Ron said? You're making me miserable. 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 And your cheese done? Yeah, and it looks great. It's so not much. ready to eat yet. Okay, so I'm gonna surface salt this cheese. Nope. Rowan, it's not a cartoon. Okay, Freddie, you can come fix the plates here. This is a hot mess of bowls and plates. Okay, I put, this is actually a rack for the Instant Pot. And to surface salt, there is no measuring of salt. You're just salting heavily. And as soon as there's like a wet spot, like you just add more salt. And for like a couple days, you just add more salt. And then you drain salt off of the plate, like the water off the plate and such, because there's gonna be moisture on the plate. Okay, I'm gonna flip it over. Salt the top. Go brush your hair. Okay, so now I'm gonna leave this and I'm gonna be flipping it and salting it a couple times a day for probably three days. Yeah.